Hello, everyone. We're starting the sixth final session of the Discord bot workshop. So, yes, if you go on the server, you should see the session notes are posted. Just click the link and then, uh, yeah, go ahead. Should we turn down the lights? Uh, I think lights are fine right now. Yeah. You can see it pretty clear. That's cool. That's annoying to the other people. So, we're never have to do it. All right, go. Okay, so our first thing we're gonna do, like similar to last week, we're gonna create an account, like open. It. We're gonna create an account in MongoDB, and then you just use whatever account you want, but make sure it's free. Huh? Oh, thanks. <laughs> so we're gonna make a share cluster, and the share cluster is free. Oh my gosh! And then you can change the location, the server location to the organ. Mm -hmm. Or just because it's closest. Yeah, it's default to on this place, but you can change your organ. And you just create the account. Sure. <laughs> okay, after you're done making an account, you can make a collection. And then you have to name it correctly. Okay, after you created your cluster, you have to click on the connect button, click on connect your application. Select go as the driver, and then the further version you want 1.6. And then what we want from this is basically similar to OpenAI last week. We need the URL. And after this, we're going to paste it in the configs. Yeah. All right. Uh, oh, wait. Yeah. All right. Uh, any questions so far on what we just covered? Anything you want us to go through again? Or like, we'll just give you a bit of time to do that. Just make eye contact when you're done or something. Yeah. Give us a look over. All right, is everyone done with this part? I think they're, they're doing a CAPTCHA or something. CAPTCHA? Because yeah. you need that to go make the account, right? Okay. Just raise your hand if you need like help with this. Oh, yes. Uh, what part is this? Just I just created one. But, did you so click on database? All right, so you created a cluster, right? So go to browse collections. And then create so like add one. Add my or try clicking add my own data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just create one. Okay. Just name the database and then name the collection. It, it looks like this, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, good question. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, you can come over here if you want somewhere or like that table. Yeah. Oh, so what did you pick? Oh, to so connect. Yeah. Oh, uh, hmm. oh, I think you have to create a user first. Oh. Yeah, let's make like a user and then put a password. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it might ask you to create a database user. Just go ahead and create that before you get to this part. Because that account is what you're going to use for your link. All right, yeah, basically the important part is to get the uh, the link. There's going to be like a link inside of it. I think yeah. it's like, yeah, I think it's link right here. That's the main part. You're going to need that for the next step. Um, all right, is everyone good? Cool. cool. Okay, hey, so now um, next step, we need to connect like our code to the database. So you're going to have to run that uh, command in terminal 
go get go dot mongodb etc so just go ahead and paste that into your terminal so after that um you're going to take your uh, URL that you just got like in the previous step and then go to your config file and update it accordingly. Just like how you um, did it with the token, the bot prefix and the open AI API key. Just update that in the same way. But if you forgot how to do that, you can just re reference like the session five notes because it's just the same um, template. Good. If you don't have the config files, by the way, you can just copy the link directly for a later step. This step is technically optional, so. Not recommended. Yeah. But anyway, once you've done that, um, make a new folder called db and make a uh, new file in that folder called db.go. A new folder, db, a new file. The first year, you're going to start off with like your package and all your imports and stuff. Uh, we're going to need a struct that reflects like whatever we have in our DB. Um, that includes an ID string, a name string, and a balance int. As for connect, that's just um, copied code from earlier, except you replace the um, URL to use our config file instead. After that, you're going to want to make um, a few variables to be able to access your database. So let's say GoDB is client.database go and users collection uh, go db.collection users. And for the fourth part, that's just uh, error checking. You're pinging the database, so it can confirm that you're actually connected to it. Then if it's connected, you just print it out, which is technically optional, but lets you know that you're connected. Um, anyway, once you do that, we're going to want to add functionality so we can actually read into our database. And in order to do that, we're going to um, use, this, use a balance command. That's just going to read the balance of the user in the database. We're going to use the um, find one function in order to read the database, which takes a bson.m, which is an un unordered list. Uh, we can use that to filter the DB and like look for the user. We're gonna, then going to decode that and basically take the data we found and put it back into the user object. So here he's making the for the balance command.
With the um, actual find one command, I just can like find the user within the date DV. And he's just going to copy paste that, I guess. And the user not found part, that's just error checking again. of the error, yeah. Then after that, what um, we're gonna do is just use an embed in order to like um, send back the data that we found in the DB. It's just gonna say that like, oh, you have this amount of units of balance and you're gonna access the user object for that. And that's the end of read functionality. What? Interesting. Oh, this this code go not. Where is this function that we're using in actual Because you need to actually um access the database in order to read it, right? Well, so you need to like question. Oh, yeah, I'm just asking, like, where, are we using? where are we using the database? Um, all right, so in our database, go func file right here, right? Actually, that's a good point. So there's like this connect function, right? Mm -hmm. Before we do anything, we should probably call that. So we'll go here, just put anywhere within your init function db.connect, and then you'll have to like import it here, right? So yeah, so then when your main function runs, it'll connect, it'll run the connect function which goes into here and does all the API stuff that we just did earlier, right? And that's how it gets that set up. Additionally, these parts are just like checking if, if it's successfully connected. And then the way we're using it in our balance function, we import db, right? So then we'll just say, okay, db.usercollection. If you go in db, user collection is defined as a collection from database, which is defined from client, and client is what we connected to. So it goes to the database, finds the database called Go, or whatever database you named it, right? Just change it to your name thing. Then it'll find a collection that you named it, right? And then it'll go and run the find one on that collection and look for a bson.m, which is an unordered list to filter out for IDs that match your author ID, right? So it'll try to find the user there. And then this decode uh, ampersand user, right? All it does is it takes the information it found and put it into this variable. And this variable is a from a struct of this, which mimics what you have in your database. So, or what we're going to put in our database. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Or okay. All right. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to go through, this is a read part, right? In CRUD, you have create, read, update, delete. This is read. We're now going to do create and update. So to do that, we're going to create a new function called profit. All it's going to do is update your balance amount by like 100. So it'll update the value. So we're going to create it called profit.go. As normal package mux. Do an import. And then the actual function is going to be like such. PS Discord go dot session PM Discord go dot message CTX context. And like we did in the balance command, we're going to create a a variable that is a 
an object of the truck we have. That way we can unmarshal our data into it and use it. So because we're updating, um, actually the first thing we want to do is first make sure that the user exists in our database. And if they don't exist in our database, we want to create there. We want to like add it there, right? That's where the create part comes in. So real quick, we're going to just um, first create this context here. So time.second. And then for cancel. But right. so the the way I'm going to do it, and I'm going to create a for loop. And all this for loop is going to do is it will keep, keep running until we break out of that for loop, right? And I only want to break out of the for loop if I found the user in our database. So we're going to say if error set it to db dot. Once again, we're going to access the user collection. And we're going to do the same thing as the balance command since we find one once again to look for them. So we're using the unordered list to filter for our ID of the user. And we would decode whatever we found into user. And we're just going to check if the error is equal to nil, in which case that means uh, there was no error, so we found the user, so break out of the loop. But let's say we didn't find the user, we want to create one, right? So this is where the create comes into play. We're going to create a variable called user result and set it to db dot user collection dot insert one. Now insert one would go in your collection and just add one document or one data thing into it, right? So we're going to just uh, use db context once again. And this time we're going to use a bson.d, which is an ordered list because we're inserting. So we want to make sure it's in order. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to say key, we're going to do key value pairs, we're going to do key ID, and then the value will equal the ID of our user. And then we want key name. The value will be dm author username, and then lastly we want the balance. And because we're creating it for the first time, we'll just set the value to uh, zero. But you can set it whatever you want. Just set it to zero for this case, and then just put a comma at the end of that. All right. And user result is a type of Mongo .insert one result. Uh, what that allows us to do, first we're going to just quickly error check. So if we get an error, just print that out. But the user result will allow us to print user result dot inserted ID. And inserted ID, if you hover above that, it's just the ID of the insert document, a value generated by the driver will be your primitive object ID. So it just tells you the number of the document that you inserted, which is good for debugging sake and just general logging. So we'll just have that there. So now that we created the user, it'll it's a for loop, right? So we'll go back to the top. It'll once again try to look for the user. This time it'll find it, so it'll just break out and now our user is updated to be the uh, the one we just created, right? So with that, uh, now we're going to do the updating part. So let's say update dot users collection dot find one and update update. This will take in a DB context again, an unordered list of ID dm dot author dot uh, author dot ID. Then I'll take in a B uh, B on the an ordered list because we're updating, so we want the order matters. But this time we're not going to be doing like um uh, like how we did up here. 
instead our key will actually just be this keyword of set which looks like this it tells them that we're just going to be updating all of the values or update all of the values that we uh, specifically indicate which in this case we're just going to want to update the balance so we'll say another ordered list of key set it to balance because that's the only one we want to update and then the value would just equal the user and this user is accessing the one we found earlier so we're going to grab that balance and increment it by 100 and yeah so that's how you update it and then we'll just decode the entire thing the user once again so that we can uh you access the updated version Gonna format this a little better. Okay. The next thing we'll do is some error checking to make sure it successfully updated. If they found an error, just log it and then cancel the entire program, right? And then the last part is just another embed to send it back to the user. This time, I, I just put here like username. This one accesses the updated user, okay, username, earn, and then whatever value they earn, right? and I send that uh, and then back to them. So real quick, once again, we'll go through it. The first part, it just looks for the user and if it doesn't find it, create one and look for it again. And if it finds it, break out. So now we have the um, this user variable over here with the correct values. Whatever information it found over here, it'll just put it into uh, this structure so that we can access them directly. And then we go and find one update and we look for this, the user ID, right? This is our filter. Um, the order of the matters, so we're using the unordered list, but the actual update matters, so we're using ordered. And then over here, we're saying, grab the user balance, which is from here, and add 100 to it, right? Yeah. And then decode that into user, so we have the updated version. Error check, embed, uh, and print out, and that's it. So that's your, cre uh, that's your create and update. Create, update. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's an error. Where is it? What message? I think you just wanted me to put some commas over here. So I put a comma there and then a comma here, and now the air is gone. That makes sense though, because it's a list, so it wants to be separated. Oh, wait. Not your turn. So now we're going to create the function to actually delete this stuff in our database, which we'll call self delete. Right. Self destruct. It doesn't matter though, but yeah. Okay, so this self destruct function, we're going to pass in the Discord session, the Discord method, and the context. Let's copy and paste them. Yeah. So we copy and pasted the verb. Okay, in order to actually delete, we're going to use the find one and delete function from the DB. And then this function is going to take in the DB context and unordered list that we're going to use to find a user and delete. 
and then we're going to store it basically in an error found variable in order to like if it fails so we're going to throw the user error message and then this is basically the entire delete function like after we're done deleting we're going to create that event message Let like channel message send the error if it actually failed. And now I'm going to create the embed, which is basically we just have to like change the description and tell the user that we actually deleted something. Everything else is optional, like the title and color. You don't have to do them. And then finally, we're going to use the like channel message send, so we actually send the embed. And that's basically it for the delete. Any questions on this part? So once again, you just call the delete function, take some context, 10 seconds, on order list, filter it off the ID, decode that into users so we can access it later. Or well, in this case, when we access it later, we're accessing um like the data is no longer in the database, but before we delete it, we want to like just save it so that we can do something with it. So, which is what we're doing over here, we're saying username. Mm -hmm. So, you tell them that, okay, your account was deleted, right? Technically, the user doesn't exist anymore, but we're still able to access it because we decoded up here. And then we're checking if the error is no, which means, um, error is not no, which means something messed up. So, we just tell them, user not found, try running the profit command, which we made earlier. And the profit command, if you remember, if it doesn't find a user, it makes it, right? So, in case you didn't mean to do this, it's telling you, go make your account, right? And yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. We're going to go to the main uh, function, main file, and just add in the routers. I already added them, so I'm comment them out. So remember, there's three functions, profit, uh, val, and self-destruct. I'm just going to go ahead and go run main.go. And as you can see, it tells me the databases I have, go main admin local. This was from the uh, this code. They used list databases, list database names, but they got the databases and it's printed it out. So I can see, okay, we connected successfully. Um, now I'm gonna just go ahead and show you this. Right. If I do bow, it'll tell me you're not found. Try running the oh, okay. I meant profit. This is outdated, but yes, it, I meant like it was a profit command, right? You can go ahead and fix that real fast, actually. Just bow command grammatical error okay save Got that again because now running the profit command if i do self dish correct it also tells me to running the profit command so if i run the profit command it says oh profit excuse me earn 100 units if i do bow now you can see it went it read it it got the value 100 units. Mm -hmm. If I profit, it will update, right? That's the update part. Updates, I'll do that again. Updates. Now, if I go back and read the value, it'll be 300 now. Mm -hmm. And now, if I self destruct, destruct, it terminates my account, right? So now I no longer have this 300 units. If I do, well, the user no longer exists in the database, so it'll tell me user not found. And that's essentially the C R U D of CRUD, right? Create, read, update, delete. With this, you can basically do anything that you want in data terms. And while MongoDB is a good resource for this, there are many other like uh, databases that you can use, uh, like this Postgres, right? Is it Postgres. Post Postgres. Postgres. It's another SQL database that you can use, which is also free. 
Um, similar concept, maybe a little recoding. But yeah, that's basically it. You can mess around with this. You can create like an economy system. You can create a way to tally like game scores. Or yeah, that's basically data integration with uh, your Discord bot. Any questions? Cool. My I guess. Oh, yes. These are not found. I think it's probably something. Mm. Did you make the user? Mm -hmm. Hey, connect, yeah. Uh, yeah, or no, no, include full. Or yeah, if you, if you just want the link, yeah. If you just want the link, then take that off. No, I think it messed up. <laughs> You're missing the uh, bracket. Oh. Probably your config that go. Hmm? Oh yeah, try. Did you edit this one? Yeah, no, he did. Uh, yeah. Okay. Go to your. Uh, db.go to your connect function. Oh. Config. Dot, you know, it's, it's there. And then because it couldn't connect it here out. Oh, go back to your uh, config.json. You have to put your password in the link. Oh. There's like some bracket that says password. Yeah. Replace that with your actual password. Oh. <laughs> I almost forgot about that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and officially end the workshop here. This was the final workshop in the series. So now you know how to make a Discord bot in Golang, how to access APIs with this and other fun stuff. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for the series. This is pretty fun. I might put a GitHub repo with the Discord bot and then you can just, yeah, look at that. Okay, thank you guys.